Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. We're going to read verses 1 through 7 this evening. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 1 through 7. Sometimes when you preach, you're not trying to correct anything. You're just trying to remind us of who we are. And sometimes we just need to be reminded of who we are, what we believe, what we do around here. Um, because if you don't do that, then you begin to stray. And tonight I just kind of want to do a little reminder. If you will, take your Bibles. Deuteronomy 32, verse 1. Let's all stand as we read the Word of God. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 1. If you have it, give me a good strong amen. amen. Scripture says in verse 1, Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass, because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock. I like that right there, capital R. His work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment, a God of truth, and without iniquity, just and right is he. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and crooked generation. Do ye thus requit the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is not he thy father that hath bought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee thy elders, and they will tell thee. One little phrase I was reading in here uh, one morning, and I was reading where he says, remember the days of old. And then I began, began to kind of go through what he was talking about, the days of old. I want to talk to you tonight on that topic, remember the days of old. Father, I love those old days. As I look back, I love reading about what you did in the old days. Now, God, I want you to help us tonight as I talk to our people for the next few minutes and just kind of remind them of these old days and what, we, what you wanted us to remember from these old days. I pray that you to use me, help me, Holy Ghost of God. Fill me with your power, please, in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Moses was an old man. He was addressing a nation that he loved. He had led them for 40 years from Egypt. To the, pro to the edge of the promised land. He knows he's about ready to go to heaven. God's already told him. He said, I'm going to take you to heaven. Just right around the corner, I'm going to take you to heaven. And he now gathers Israel together. The whole book of Deuteronomy are the last words that an old man gives to a nation before he heads off into heaven. He wanted them to remember. He knew Joshua was going to be the next leader, but he wanted that next leader to also be reminded of some things as he goes through the whole book of Deuteronomy. He comes right here, and he, he loves his people, and he, he says, and he talks about in, this, in the old days of his life, he says, now I want you to remember the days of old. He says, don't forget those days of old. You look at it, he says, remember the days of old. Consider the years of of many generations. He says, I, I don't want you to forget what God's done through us, through our forefathers, those that were before us. He says, don't forget them. He says, they, he says it's, it's easy for us to become a new generation that wants to just push that old generation off. But he says, we need that old generation. And we need those old days. And we don't need to try something new. He says, the God that brought us to the prefaces of the promised land, the God that brought us out of the, of the land of Egypt is that same God that will get us into that promised land. And that's the same God that will keep us in that promised land. And that's the same God that will do something for generations to come if we remember the days of old. Moses wanted them to remember these days so that they wouldn't change their God. You know why? He loved his country. He wanted his country to stay successful. Now, we live in, day, in days in America 
not just as an American, but even as Christians, that are trying to throw those of the past out and try to recreate a new path. Can I tell you, I'm not trying to recreate a new path because I don't know where the new path will take me. I just want to keep walking the same old ways that those of the past have walked because I know where their end brought them and their end brought them where I want to end up one day. We have people today, they, you, you can go to podcasts and you can find, you can find everything you want um, and that, that, is, that is opposed to what we believe. You can find it all day long. But ladies and gentlemen, just because they have a following doesn't mean that they're a good person. Can I tell you, hey, a dead animal has a following of buzzards at the top as well. And just because the buzzards are following doesn't make them someone good that we ought to follow. What we ought to do is say, boy, I want to go down those old paths, those paths that have been proven and tried that I know what they're going to do for you and I. When Moses said, remember the days of old, he knew that in his old life, he says, I, I understand I'm not a perfect person. And he says, and those before us were not perfect people. They were sinners. And he said, if you investigate them, you'll find sin in their life. But God used them. And God used them mightily. And God provided for them. And he says, I'm not going to pick apart the previous generation because, so to justify my laziness and my backslidden ways. I want to go ahead and perpetuate the days of old. Amen. I was talking to someone recently, I think this week, we were talking about this. And I, you know, I, I'm a big, I, I, love, I love the days of old. I like reading the old men of God. And are they perfect men of God? Absolutely not. They're sinners like you and I. But God used them. God used them. Now, because God used them, I think I ought to keep my mouth shut and start, instead of criticizing them. I think I ought to just learn from their life and find out why did God use them. You see, that same God that used them can use us tonight if we'll do the same thing that those men did. We just have to stop trying to criticize them and cast them out and create a new Christianity. There is no such thing called a new Christianity because it comes from Jesus Christ. If it's new, it's not of Christ. I practice an old Christianity. Not trying to create a new circle. I've already found my circle is Jesus Christ. I've already found my book that I want to read. I've already found the church I want to be in. And I'm not trying to create something new. I'm trying to say, okay, ladies and gentlemen, I want to remember the days of old. Now, what does it mean to remember the days of old? It means this. It means to hold those days in high admiration. Hold those days in high admiration. When I go, if you were to go to my office and look on my wall, on the north wall, up against the, the, the northwest wall over there, you'll see some men on that wall. Now, I'm not ashamed of those men. I'm, I'm, when I get the money, I'm going to redo that whole wall, and I've got some other names I want to add to that wall. But can I tell you, these were the men that I look up to, men like Lester Roloff, men like Tom Malone, men like Jack Hiles, men like Lee Robertson, men like, like, um, like J. Frank Norris, men like Dan Dallas Billington, men like uh, men, men like Harold Seitler. These are the type of guys that I, I I heard them. I watched them. I watched their lives. I didn't get to see J. Frank Norris, but every one of these other men, I've, I've, I've known them. I've seen them. And that's the kind of guys that I want to say, well, I, if I can have a ministry like theirs, boy, what a wonderful ministry. What a wonderful ministry. I hold their days in high admiration people might say well you're you're just worshiping a man you can call it what you want to but god says remember the days of old I, I, I think of um, Brother Charlie O'Dan. I was just thinking about him this week um, in my, when I was out, out of town just praying and just thanking God for Brother O'Daniel. And I was thinking about the little Bible, the, the, the 1858 little Bible that I got small. little Bible. I was showing it to some of the, um, some of the Turk girls. And, and, and the little tiny script, the tiny words right there, they couldn't read because they, they were blind. But the young man got up and he could read it. And, um, but, but you got to under, but just a small little Bible. Can I tell you, oh, thank God for the old men that knew the right book that knew the right way that knew the right path and hey we ought to hold them up in high admiration I'd much rather hold up these men who lived holy lives 
And let our young men say these are the kind of guys you ought to look up to. I want an Ephraim to be able to look up to these old men and say, well, that's what I want to be one day. I want a Yaya over there to be able to look up to these, young, these old men and say, yeah, boy, I wish I could have a minister like that. I want those young men, the, um, the Obisa boys, to be able to look up and say, that's the kind of men. That's what I want. My, I want God to do something in my life like that. Hey, I, I, look at, I, look at, I look at Brother Jesse, and I look at Alex, and I look at Isaiah, I look at Isaac, and I look at all, I look at all of you, and, and I say, oh, I want God to do something in their life. I want them to get these heroes and why, hold them up high. It's Instead of trying to tear them down. He says, remember the days of old. Remember the days of old. He says, remember, what does it mean? It means to hold them in high admiration. What does it mean? It means to recall what God did in those days. I have found myself at this stage of my life rereading all the books that these men have written. Now, a couple of my staff members know on Wednesday I, I start texting out little thing quotes that I get from these guys. They get a little nervous on Wednesday night. They say, you got to stop this on Wednesday, preacher. It fires you up. I don't know if that's what it is. I will tell you this. I, I read them. You say, why? Because I want to remember them. I want to remember them. I'd rather remember someone from the past and read their works than read something new that I don't know anything about this guy. You see, God says, hold them. He says, remember the days of old. That means hold them in high admiration. It means to recall what God did in their ministries in those days. It means to have in mind what you have seen and known and experienced. God says, remember those days. You've seen some of them. You were alive in some of their days. Now, don't forget them. I can, I, uh, my wife and I, my father-in-law and I, and some of those who've gone to the same church that I went to back in, in Indiana, we will talk about those big days, and we're remembering the day we were, we've seen it. We've experienced what God did in those days. And my job as a pastor is not to just to kind of whitewash it and try to minimize what those guys did. I'm to lift it up, not to make it bigger than what it is, but to lift it up and say, hey, God did something miraculous and he can still do it today. Now when I read what God says, God talks about some things that we ought to remember from the days of old. And I want to give you four things and we'll pack our bags and go home. So don't get too excited. We might be here for a while on each of these. First of all, remember the book of old. Amen. Remember the book of old. So what are you talking about? God, Moses said now, now Israel, I want you to remember. I want you to remember one thing. I want you to remember how I went up on the top of Mount Sinai. These commandments that I gave you are not my words. These are God's words. He says these words were written in heaven before, before the world was ever created. But God told me to go up to the top of Mount Sinai. I was there for 40 days and 40 nights. And while I was there at the top of Mount Sinai, God gave me his words. Get this now. And the Bible even says that God wrote the commandments on the tablets of stone. With the finger of God, he wrote those tablets down. What was God doing? God was preserving the preserved word of heaven down to earth through a man. God did not make, God did not make man and man spoke it in his personality. God gave man that personality and said, I'm going to put these words down like that. Why? Remember the book of old. He says, remember how you got that book. Remember the God who gave you that book. Remember the God that preserved that book. Remember the God that inspired that book. He says, remember the book of old. I come tonight and I say, remember the book of old. You say, what book of old are you talking about? For you and I, it's the King James Bible. King James Bible. Now, I'm saying tonight, it's time that we remember that the King James Bible, God did preserve his word in the King James Bible. This past week, I read a preacher that showed his ignorance. He says, we need to modernize God's word to have words that, that, we, that we understand. He says, we, now, we don't want to change this over here, but we want to change these words right here. Do you realize how stupid that sounds? So I'm going to be God, and I'm going to decide which words to change and which words not to change. I have read in the book of Revelation that I'm not to mess with God's word, add to it, nor take away from it. I'm to leave it alone, and I say, hey, let's leave our King James Bible alone, but let's keep on using this old King James Bible. I wouldn't give you a dime 
for a preacher. We're about ready to drop a missionary. We found out he's, promo he's promoting other versions. I'll drop in a heartbeat. I don't care how old he is. You say, why? Because this book means something. That's why. You listen to me. Somewhere we either, either, either this is God's word or it's not God's word. Either God preserved it or he didn't preserve it. Either, either God's word is right or it's not right. But if I don't have God's word, then mind telling me which one is God's word. God promised in the book of Psalms, he says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Can I tell you tonight, God looked down from heaven. God says, I'm going to give it to you, Moses. He said, now don't let the people forget how I gave it to you. He says, with the finger of God, he wrote these words on this tablet right here. Moses brought it down, brought it to the people. And he says, now the finger of God gave us these commandments. Can I tell you, God, God, God made man and God preserved his word down from generation to generation. Oh, may I say, remember the book of old. Remember the book of old. You're listening to a preacher and he starts reading something that doesn't sound right. Pull out your old King James Bible. Start looking at those words, those verses right there. And if those verses don't agree with the King James Bible, turn him off. Get in the King James Bible. But remember the book of old. You go shopping for cards. Get quiet all of a sudden. You go shopping for cards and you want to get a spiritual card and you see a Bible verse and say, oh, this is a great card. Now, if, that, if you read that verse and it doesn't sound familiar, you might want to pull out your old King James Bible. Find out if that is, the, if that is God's word right there. And if it's a King James Bible, then okay. But if it's not, put it back in the slot and say, I don't want that type of card. Why? Because we're not going to promote something that's not God's word. Remember the book of old. We've forgotten what people went through for this book right here. We've forgotten that people were burnt at the stake. Boiled in oil. Flayed alive. Murdered for this book right here. And we're so flipping about, well, it's not a big deal. It is a big deal. God's, God's preserved his word for us. Yeah. And people say, well, you know, it's the thoughts. It's not the thought, it's the word. God didn't say he preserved his thoughts, he preserved his words. Amen. Now, though his thoughts are in those words, but if I don't have his words, I don't know his thoughts. Somebody help me out. Amen. Just taking one word out can change the whole meaning of everything. Yeah. The problem is these, ver these versions aren't just taking them out. They're taking, the, they're taking verses out. Get this now. I, I just learned this. I think I forget who it was that told me. Help me out. Help me out. Whoever said it to me. But it, but in order to have a new version, I think I think there's fifteen percent, ten percent of the old version has to be different for them to put a copyright on it, or else it's considered plagiarizing. That means that every other version out there has to at least be 10% different than the King James Bible, which does not have a copyright, in order for them to be able to put a copyright on it, or else they'll say, no, you plagiarized that. You can't do that. Can I tell you tonight, if society back in days of old had that type of common sense, then why can't we? I wouldn't give you a dime for a preacher that doesn't believe that every book, every word. Well, I don't believe in double inspiration. Well, neither do I. I believe God preserved it from generation to generation. Remember the book of old. You say, man, you're getting a little, little riled up about this. Absolutely. Somebody ought to get riled up about God's word. Something inside of you ought to say, yeah, this is God. Now, if it's not God's word, let's close this whole thing down. Let's just shut it down. Let's not have the hog roast. Let's go play golf because we're not going to watch old you in Alabama because they'll both lose. Can I tell you, I'm just saying right now, what we ought to do is say, hey, this is God's word. And it is been preserved for you and I. These guys say, well, I've read this book right here and I've taken this class right here. Why don't you just take God's word? Come on now. Well, I don't understand. Then why don't you get saved? Dallas Billington, pastor of the great Akron Baptist Temple, had an eighth grade education. Listen to me now. 
eighth grade education. He said, I want to get a, when, he, when God called him, he was out of, out of high school. He said, I wanted to get a Bible education. So he said, I started reading the word of the King James Bible. So he said, King James Bible. He said, I got a dictionary, a King James Bible, and a concordance. And he said, I read it for hours. And he says, I understood it. You know why? Because he had the Holy Spirit on the inside. With an eighth grade education, he understood it. Let's look at how difficult this is to understand God's word. I just turned it. Psalm 70, verse 1. Make haste. That means quickly. Oh, God. That's him up there. To deliver me, I'm in trouble. Make haste to help me. I'm really in trouble. Oh, Lord. Well, that's difficult. That's difficult. I, I just turned the Bible. I just found that. Let's, let me turn it again. Let me see what else I can find right here. Um, uh, let, let's just go right here. Um, Malachi 2, 2. If you will not hear, you plug your ears. If you're not lay at the heart, you don't, you, don't make, you don't make it yours. To give glory unto my name, saith the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you. And I will curse your blessings. Yea, I have cursed them already because ye do not lay it to heart. See how hard that, boy, that was difficult. Miss Kate, did you understand all that? Brother Kevin, I know you're not the brightest light bulb. Did you understand all that? You okay over there? Now, come on now. I just turned the page. I, I don't have it marked. I just turned it. I just flipped it over. There it was. I'm just saying, ladies and gentlemen, it's not that it's difficult. It's just that you have the wrong spirit talking to you, and that's the problem. If you get the Holy Spirit, you can understand it. Amen. Remember the book of old. Something else he wanted us to remember. He wanted us to remember the methods of old. And he said, Moses says, now don't you dare change how you do what I taught you to do. David tried that. What happened? Somebody got killed. David copied the Philistines and said, we don't really need to put that Ark of the Covenant on the shoulders of the Levites. We'll just kind of put it on a new cart. And, and while it was on that new cart, they hit a threshing floor. They hit a little rocky area. And, and one man put his hand there to kind of steady that Ark. God killed him like that. Those methods are important, ladies and gentlemen. Can I tell you, the methods that we've, that we've heard from the days of old, they still do work today. The methods of old-fashioned preaching. Man, I, I wish I had it here. I'd play it tonight if I had it. I have a little clip of my preacher getting on the teenagers. I like to play that thing every, every service right before the morning service. So the teenager, listen to me. You think I'm tough. You ought to listen to some of those old-time preachers call out these kids and say, hey, sit up. I can see Brother Hiles one day. I see people getting up and walking out. He says, sit down. This isn't, this isn't a waltz around the auditorium. Sit down. You know what our problem is? We're so soft. I think the men would put lace on their underwear and they, don't, they forgot they're a man. You, 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 you stir their feathers a little bit. No, I'm offended. I'm offended. Well, why don't you get right with God? Great peace have they which love thy law and nothing shall offend them. Why don't you just say somewhere we've got to say, hey, the methods of old, they do work. I don't need to shut down the bus ministry and say, well, you know, it doesn't work today. It does work. Don't tell me it didn't work. Had 252 ride our buses today. Don't tell me it doesn't work. The problem is too many churches are lazy and don't want to go out after the kids and bring them into their little museum church because it might mess up the pews. Come on now. I thank God for our bus workers. These are late people going out on Saturdays and trying to get trying to get kids to ride the bus. And early Sunday morning they come in and they drove go out and try to bring children to church and say and let them know there's a God in heaven that loves them. Oh, don't forget the methods of old. Amen. The preaching, the soul winning. Did you hear me? I said the soul winning. When we forget to be a soul winning church, God will put His curse. This church is done. 
This church is not. That's why your preacher, every once in a while, gets a little grumpy. You, you don't believe me? Ask my staff. When I look at the numbers and our numbers of people getting saved a little down, we're in for prayer meeting time, and right before we have prayer, I just I kind of set the spirit. And I'll say, and we can do better than this. Now don't sit in your office and do nothing. Get out. Tell someone how to get saved. The methods of old. The music of old. Not looking for new music. I like the music of old. I like our hymns around here. You know, what, you know what I get often? People say, what kind of music do you have here? I say, well, we sing the hymns of the faith. You know what people say? Boy, I like those old hymns. I like those old hymns. I was talking to a lady a couple weeks, I'm not this, this week, but a week ago. She's in her 80s. She goes to another church in the area, and she's in her 80s. And, and I, 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 I told her about our church, and I said, now, we're, we're kind of old school. Of course, I go soul winning, you know, like this, except for the suit coat. And I said, of course, the way you dress, you can kind of figure out I'm old school. She goes, what kind of songs do you sing? I said, I said, we sing the old hymns of the face. She goes, oh, she goes, I love those old hymns. She says, boy, that's what. She goes, I, I, the church I'm in, they've kind of gone away from those old hymns. She goes, I wish. I said, well, you can come over to a church that still sings them. There's nothing wrong with blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Nothing wrong with rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Nothing wrong with victory in Jesus. Hey, I heard an old, old story. Hey, thank God for the old hymns. Thank God for the songs, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost and now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Thank God for the song on a hill far away. Stood an old rugged cross. Hey, the emblem who's suffering and say, hey, thank God for the old songs he said remember the book of old remember the methods of old the methods of Sunday school did you hear me Sunday school those who miss Sunday school could never become a Timothy because Timothy sat and heard the teaching of the word of God as a young man what's that Sunday school Sunday school. I'm too good. For, I'm too big for that. I know everything. Boy, let me tell you what my mama said to me one day. Brother Turk, you've heard this story. We were, we were going to sing. We we're going to sing Jesus loves me in church. My, we only had we had. You've seen the auditorium, and and I, and I was and my mama. The piano was over here, and I would sit right there where mama could see me. And and they were going to sing um, Jesus loves me. Kind of rolled my eyes, and then I wasn't going to sing. My my mama saw, saw that. We got home that night. Mama said, son, you too big to sing Jesus loves me? I said, mama, that's for kids. She goes, son, Jesus loves me. It's not for kids. Jesus loves me for everyone. Somebody help me out. She goes, don't you want Jesus to love you? I said, yes. She goes, and why won't you sing? Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Oh, let me tell you something. Somewhere we need to get back to the old hymns, those old methods. Why? That's where God's turned in our churches. He said, don't forget the book of old. Remember the book of old. Remember the methods of old. Then he said something else. Remember the miracles of old. He said, now, Israel, don't you forget what God did at that Red Sea. Don't you forget it. Don't you forget what God did um, delivering you from the land of Egypt. Don't you forget how God separated you from the Egyptians. And don't you forget that blood was applied on the doorpost. And without the blood, without the shedding of blood, those who didn't have that blood, the firstborn in every house died inside of that plague. Oh, let me tell you something tonight. Hey, don't forget the miracles of old. You ought to talk about them. Some of, you, some of you young bucks ought to sit down with Brother Heidenreich sometime. Let him tell you some of those old stories that he did up in the mountains of the Philippines. You think he's just an old man back there with a cane. He's more than that. He's a man of God. And some of you would be wise to go and sit down with him and listen to him and say, can you tell me some of the miracles of old? Let me tell you something somewhere. There ought to be a hunger, a desire inside of our heart to hear the miracles of old. 
I remember one day, my wife and I, we were down in Highland Park Baptist Church, and we were looking for Dr. Lee Robertson. He was the one who God used to pastor the church. He's, re, he's retired now, and he was just, he was becoming, I think he was probably in his early 80s at that time. And we're, and, and some other man um, had, had taken the church, and the church had kind of forgot him. He still kept his old office. And I remember we were walking, uh, walking around trying to get inside the church building. All the doors were locked, and, and we finally found the janitor. And we said to the janitor, we said, hey, um, um, we'd like to find Dr. Robertson. Can you show us where his office is? He goes, Dr. Robertson, Dr. Robertson, Dr. Robertson. I said, yeah, you know, Dr. Robertson. He goes, oh, you mean that pastor across town? I said, no, I, no, he didn't pastor across town. He pastored this church. He goes, no, he's not the pastor. I said, sir, I said, you wouldn't have a job if it wasn't for him. He says, you mean that old man that sits in that office over there? Buddy, all of a sudden the hairs in the back of my neck stood straight out. Boy, I wanted to tell him I was doing everything I could not to listen to that sermon I preached on the tongue a few weeks ago. I wanted to tell him what I think. But let me tell you something. Somewhere there's some old men you ought to sit down and say, tell me the miracles of old. Yes, That's right. That's why I like getting around the old men. I don't mind having a Dr. Gray in here. He can tell me about what God did through his ministry in those old days. I like get hearing the stories. You say, why it stirs me. You know why some of you aren't stirred? Because you, you're listening, to, you're listening to, to Instagram and Snapchat when you ought to be listening to those who did the works of old. I'm not interested in your new little thing of what you're trying to do. I want to find out what these men of old did. And I said, boy, if I can somehow get just a little bit of what they had. If I could just have something of what they had. Boy, I'd be pleased if God could just do that same work here at Maranatha Baptist Church. And I believe God can. Oh, let me tell you, I walked through the auditorium here on past Thursday of a large church that used to be over there. And I walked and I walked into that auditorium the downstairs and saw the balcony and I I was walking, I, and I was, just admit, I was just kind of remembering. I knew the pastor of that church, and good man, and I saw that auditorium, and I thought to myself, oh, oh, the souls that have walked down that aisle, the people that have got saved and baptized, the great work that God did in that church over there, and now it's empty, and now it's a storage unit pretty much, not even used anymore, and I thought to myself, what a shame, what a shame. Oh, oh and I can't tell you, Oklahoma City needs a church that says, hey, we're going to remember the works of old, and we're going to talk about what God did and let's see if God can't do those same miracles here. Yes, he said, remember the book of old. He said, remember the methods of old. He said, remember the miracles of old. And then he said one other thing, remember the power of old. Oh, those men knew what it was like to beg God to fill them with their power. Right. Amen. I think of old Dr. Tom Malone. Oh, I think we need to put that one out. Fill thine horn with oil. Dr. Tom Malone preaching in his old gravelly voice. He talked about old Samuel. Samuel was heartbroken. And because, because Saul, had, Saul had fallen and, and, and Samuel was there, heartbroken, and God comes down. I can hear old Dr. Tom Malone, Samuel, get up. Samuel, fill thine horn with oil. Go out there and find there's another man. I want you, and I can hear old Tom Malone preach that way. Boy, how we need some people to get filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Can I tell you, remember the power of old. Let me tell you one thing this generation misses more than anything else. We don't need graphic departments. We don't need um, fancy auditoriums. We don't need all the, all the 100 to 150 seat choirs. What we need is an old-fashioned um, filling of the Holy Spirit of God to move in our Sunday school teachers and to move in our preachers and to move in our church people. Hey, this nation needs some filling of old. Jonathan Edwards used to preach. Jonathan Edwards was not an eloquent preacher. He just read his sermons, Brother Williams. Thousands would come to hear Jonathan Edwards preach. He'd preach a sermon, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. 
they said conviction was so powerful in that auditorium that people would hold the pillars of the building afraid they're going to slip out into hell while he was preaching. I can think of J. Harold Smith. God's three deadlines. And J. Harold Smith would talk about you can't curse the Holy Spirit and live. Remember old J. Harold Smith used to talk about, he says, I've never, he says, anyone I've ever heard curse the Holy Spirit, they've not lived for 24 hours. The power of old. He would preach and he would talk about, there's one way you can, you can blaspheme the Holy Spirit and that is he convicts you and you turn him away and won't get saved. He says that. I, I, he preached that sermon thousands of times and every time conviction would fall and people would come and get saved. Oh, we need the old power of old. Amen. Amen. A feeling of that power. Oh, how we need it. People that would say, I, I'm done. I'm tired of just the old emptiness inside. Begging, pleading. God, I need that feeling. Not a feeling of something that I feel, but I need the feeling of the Holy Ghost of God that fills me from the top of my head to the bottom of my foot. I've got, all, I've got access to all the power of the Holy Spirit, but I want him to have access to all of Alan Domley. And the, and the day that Alan Domley dies and he lets the Holy Spirit take over, something changes on the inside. Those men weren't known for their intellect. They didn't, we, weren't, we don't even know if they preached topical, if they preached verse by verse. We don't know what they did. One thing we do know is they have the power of God on them. He says, remember the book of old. Remember how you got it. God preserved it. He just happened to use sinful man to do it. He says, remember, remember the methods of old. Those methods that worked in yesteryear will still work today. Amen. He said, remember, remember the miracles of old. The God that did miracles in yesterday's ministries can still do miracles today. But he says, but, but, but don't forget this. Don't forget, remember the power of old. We're always looking for new solutions. There is no substitute for the power of God. I'm afraid our Bible colleges, young men are going through Bible colleges, get a, get, get a degree, haven't spent one night begging God for his power. There ought to be a yearning inside of every young preacher. Boy, I want to have the power of God on my life. Oh, I want that feeling. I ask you tonight, teacher, Sunday school teacher. I ask you tonight, staff member. I ask you tonight, deacon. When's the last time you got alone with God and you said, I'm going to spend some hours begging God for his feeling? I've got to have that power. Hey, the power of old. Well, I hope this person wins the presidency, or I hope if they win, that'll turn everything around. No, no, no. You better remember the book of old that does the conviction. You better remember the methods of old that brings that book to those people. You better remember the miracles of old, how God can take that, that book right there and those methods and perform a miracle in the lives of people, and don't forget the power that it takes to do it. He said, remember the, old, the, remember the works of old. Yeah. Moses says, don't forget those old days. Yeah. Don't forget them. He says, those old days ought to stir you. Ought to motivate you. Ought to do something in your heart. Remember them. You know what this whole nation is looking for? Looking for a church. It still believes the old book. Yeah. Practices the old methods. 
believes in the miracles of God, believes that God can still perform miracles, but also has the power of God upon them. And they come in and they sit and they say, oh, I wish I could have that. I wish I could have that. Are you remembering the old days? Now, what are they stirring you to do? We've got a big week next week. I'd say this week we ought to remember the methods work. The miracles are there. God can still do it. But I am saying this tonight. If we're going to have something great happen next week, we better get along with God this week. And we better spend some time with God and say, oh, God, fill us. Fill us with your power. We know about everything else. But we don't know about that power on the inside, that filling. That God fills us and uses us in a powerful way. Beyond what we can do. Yeah. Father, tonight. Oh, God, tonight, remember the days of old. The book, the methods, the miracles, the power. Oh, God, help us tonight. The God of Moses is still God today. The power that you gave to the apostles in the New Testament is still available to us today. When you said be filled with the Spirit, that command is still for us today, how we need to be filled. Oh, God, do something tonight in our hearts. Heads are bowed.